Well, welcome here to Lydon Valley for NBL D1 action, the first game of the new year. We've got the Red Rockets, they're taking on the TVC Cavaliers. My name is Darren Paul, alongside Ben Fisher to take you through all the action in today's matchup. Ben, always exciting, first game back after the winter break in the National League. How are both sides going to be prepared for, for that, being back in front of the crowd after a little bit of a layoff? Well, I think it'd be a really interesting encounter, to be honest. I think that um, a lot of players these days actually have a lot of active rest over the uh, the Christmas break, so they're not they're not sort of down tools completely. So um, the Rockets, from what I've seen in practice this week, look in good shape, um, and the Thames Valley Cavaliers possess a really strong roster. So I think it's going to be a fantastic game. Now we were talking off mic. It's a really really tight congested league so far this year. We've got 11th versus 12th between these two sides today. Um, the form coming in, Rockets playing really good basketball right now. They're four and one. TBC one and four in the last five you know does that factor into today's game at all for you do you know what I don't think it does I think that because um, I mean yeah obviously if you've got some momentum that is helpful but I think the Thames Valley Cavaliers do as I said before have a they pose a really good roster and do play some really good basketball um, and I think anybody in, can beat anybody in this league probably bar Hemel at this moment in time so yeah, as it promises to be a really good game, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll see some very good basketball on show. We're about three minutes out from tip once these uh, pre-match presentation gets completed. Uh, a couple of key players for me for today's game, players to watch for TVC, obviously Juan Manning and Victor Olerarin. Olerarin running away and scoring 19.2 points per game. Anybody from TV that really stands out for you? Well, yeah, those guys and, and AJ Roberts as well. I think he's uh, he's got some really, really good experience that he brings to the game. Um, so I think him and I think um, Shaq Lewis as well, who uh, who uh, starred for for Hemel uh, not so long ago, and I think he'll bring uh, a real rebounding presence that that maybe TBC actually lacked uh, prior to the Christmas break. Yeah, I think I buried the lead a little bit there. Shaq Lewis back in action. First time for TVC since his injury back in November. For the Wren Rockets, Cracknell leading the way. 19.6 points per game, along with Jenkins. 14.3 points per game. Those two, you know, absolute point goblins out there. But, you know, anybody stand out for you? And what do those two bring? I think that uh, Troy Cracknell is, is a bit of a rocket stud right now. Uh, he, he is definitely the go-to guy. But I think the Rockets will really be hoping that they can get their interior play a lot better. Finn Port has been impressing for the Rockets prior to, this, prior to the Christmas break. And I think Jordan Jackson really he needed the Christmas break just to press that reset button um, and to get back to a little bit of form because he's a, he's, a, he's a big size. So we've got the roster on the screen there. A couple of changes to note. Daniel Delson Lowry does suit up. He wears 12 today as does Rocco Dominovic, he's in 21 for Thames Valley Cavaliers. And the Reading Rockets, as you see on screen there, of course, head coach Samit Nazarade. Talk to me about how he's found this season with these Rockets. 
Yes, I think it's uh, been an interesting one for him coming back into the league after a, after a significant break. Um, I think that he's a he's an excellent uh, he's an, got an excellent basketball brain. Um, I think he's very demanding of his players, that's for sure. And I think that you've seen that in the in the recent weeks prior to Christmas, his team's starting to kind of play the basketball he's wanting them to play. Now, what are your keys to game for today? What what do you see from TVC that is going to give them possibly the edge in this encounter? I would say I would say for both teams, it's going to be the rebounding game. I think whoever wins the battle of the boards has a really good chance of coming out on top. I think the interior game is going to be a key key matchup for both teams. Um, with with a lot of athletic talent on the, the TVC team. I think their, their transition play, if, if the Rockets can defend in transition, then they'll have a really good chance. But that's certainly something that the TVC will be looking to go towards. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think TVC, you know, if they want, want to take away the win here, I think they really do need to protect the paint just a little bit. We saw against Loughborough how a couple of rebounds, like if they'd have gone the other way, that would have been a much more comfortable time in regular time. What about for the Ren Rockets? I think for the Rockets, they they've got a like it's, it's about defensive stops. Um, they'll have done a, they'll have done their homework on this TBC team. Uh, they'll be looking to take away the the, the key uh, the key guys. Um, so I think if they can do that and they can execute uh, on offense, I think they have a really good chance of winning this game. So we're about 30 seconds out. The crowd are on their feet. It is getting Rockets hit in Lydon Valley. The return of Shaq Lewis. I mean, we've already mentioned it, but how big is that? Yeah, that's great. He, he uh, as I say, he, he kind of was a player that was a little bit under the waterline when he played for Hemel Storm, but he always seemed to perform when he got into the game, and I think he's taking a more leading role in this team, so I think he'll have a big impact when he gets into the game, uh, when he, uh, when, when coach puts him in. So the two fives, well, one five, the Red Rockets made their way onto the floor, TVC still taking their instruction. From head coach Robert Banks, the five on the floor for the Rockets, all in black. Jeremiah Jenkins in four, Reeves Pinnock in five, Ben Dixon in eight, Troy Cracknell in nine, and Jordan Jackson in 15. Of course, played for the Oakland Wolves last season. Jackson, formerly of the London Lions, in, uh, in BBL. TVC about to make their way onto the floor. Their five on the floor will be number one, Troy McKindo, number four, AJ Roberts, number five, Bode Adiola, number nine, Victor Olorarin, number ten, John Manning, and number 14, Aiden Saunders. Yeah, one thing I will say just about Troy McIndo is uh, he was on, on trial with the Rockets last season, and he seems to be in really good shape now, uh, a really big inside presence. So it's going to be a really interesting one to watch for him today, for sure. Something to prove, perhaps. Yeah, could could be. Uh, but I think he's a he's a really good talent, and uh, I'll be I'll be very interested to see what he he brings to the game. I know uh, somebody I did a lot of commentary with Nigel Lloyd always had a had a thing of when players play against their old teams or if they've gone on trial somewhere, always out to with a point to prove. The tip off goes the way of the Rockets. First possession won by Jordan Jackson. Jenkins over the timeline for the first time. Good handoff on the outside, Dixon. Threes on its way, just short. Really good defense there by Manning. Taken in by the Rockets once more. Threes on the way, so it's down. That's good. Reese Pinnock. Yeah, great to see Pinnock getting going early. Um, struggled a little bit with his shooting this year, but uh, a real positive start for him. They didn't shoot that like a 20% shooter from outside as AJ Roberts off the mark. John Manning gets it, puts up the triple. Doesn't go good. Rebound there, Cracknell. Trying to get it ahead in transition. Big old nudge in the back. White nine with the foul. That's Olerarin's first personal. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite an important one for the Rockets. Um, they'll be looking to attack uh, specific guys on this TVC team. Absolutely. If you're if you're TVC, you do not want Oliveira in anywhere near foul trouble. <laughs> Absolutely, hey, definitely a key guy for this team. Reading restarting things. Dixon from three. It goes on the assist. Jeremiah Jenkins. Yeah, great stuff. Another a very solid player for the Rockets hitting his shot. I think Coach Nerazzato will want to definitely see the ball go inside. But two from two for the Rockets so far. John Manning finds it. TVC on the board. Shots up. 
Shots just a little off the mark for Aidan Saunders. Yeah, and if I'm Coach Banks, I definitely want Aidan Saunders getting to the ring early on in this game for sure. And all six foot seven of him, you want that presence inside more so than on the perimeter as it's Dixon. Looking still in the corner, sends it down low. Beautiful mid range J. Jordan Jackson. Yeah, nice from Jordan Jackson. Good to see him getting going early as well. As it's Oliveira in. Always looking inside. Hand off outside to Roberts. Manning. Steps across. Three's on the way. That goes. John Manning lets him know. Yeah, and he's a real talent and somebody that the Rockets have got to keep quiet if they're to win this game. Dixon pulls up. Doesn't go. Good bass on the boards. Manning coming away with it. Got Cracknell with him. Sorry, Pinnock with him. As Cracknell is with the steal. Yeah, a bit of an early one there from Dixon, but the, the Rockets recovered the ball. Jenkins. Sends that down low. And you're not going to... Wow, that was halfway down. Pinnock gets it. Jenkins drives through. Met hard underneath. And I think that's going to go on McKinder. Yes, the uh, Cavaliers switching the pick and roll, which allowed Jackson to slip there. Um, and I think that's been a... Uh, something that he struggled with a little bit to, is to finish inside as we uh, we watch Jenkins get fouled. So Jenkins heading to the strike for the first time today. 84.6% from the line so far this regular season. First goes. That's a slightly interesting action he's got there with his left hand. Certainly is. Um, he's not what you'd call a pure shooter, but my goodness, he can put the ball in the bucket. If it works, it works. It works. There two you go. Two. At the strike. As uh, I think we need the the mop people on towel in this case. Yeah, good old-fashioned towel on the floor here in Reading. It's classic. You just love to see it. Absolutely. So, Reading off to a hot start, 10 to 3 up here on TVC. NBL Division 1 action on a Sunday. Thank you very much for choosing to join us for this what should be a really enthralling encounter. That pass from Olerarin didn't find its mark. I think Roberts was the intended receiver. Yeah, Rockets have defended relatively well so far. But I think Coach will be happy with that. Jenkins drops off. This is really nice ball moving on the outside. Jenkins gets it back, uses that screen. Just off the mark with the three into the hands of Roberts. Sends it ahead to Manning. Kindo, first big man battle we're going to see really, kicks it back out, foul, goes on five, Reese Pinnock, first personal foul of the day for him on the floor. And it's going to be John Manning to inbound for TVC. Just the first foul Reading have conceded early in the contest, but low on the foul count. Four options, finds it. Goes outside to McKindo. Three's going to go up from John Manning. Doesn't beat the buzzer, doesn't go. That's Pinnock taking it the other way. Beautiful pass inside. Met him at the rim, puts it down. Big man John, Jordan Jackson. Yeah, we spoke about the interior game beforehand. Uh, Saunders had a huge mismatch but didn't take advantage and Rockets managed to find Jackson inside. Shaq Lewis ready to check in next time by. Needs a bit of his explosiveness as that kicks back out. Three balls on the way, long from Aidan Saunders. Good battle inside. Taking it the other way is Pinnock. Beautiful handoff, Cracknell! Can't go, fouled by Roberts. Yeah, and that's a staple of, of how the Rockets want to play. They're making TVC take difficult shots and playing in transition. And so far, so good for the home team. 
going to see Shaq Lewis checking in for Mckindo. As that's AJ's first personal. Sitting down is Olerarin as well as yep. Bodhi Adiola into the contest. Yes, Bode, one of my favourite players in the league. Um, been around for a long time, great experience. Um, and somebody definitely that can uh, get the heartbeat of his team going. First is good from Cracknell, shooting 83.1% from the stripe this season. Not bad. No. no. Yes, the second to go. I always look for a 50-40-90. He's currently on a 47-50-83. Okay, so getting closer. Getting closer. <laughs> AJ Roberts. This is man slipping. Skips it back across. Manning. Good from three. Yeah, and that's two threes, I think, from Manning. And that's, you can see Coach um, Nurizade is a little bit uh, annoyed about that one because that was probably on the scouting report for the Rockets. I mean, when you're shooting 42.3% from outside, that is... That's outrageous. You gotta stop that. There you go. Jenkins. Rockets have it on the outside. Penetration initially stopped by Shaq Lewis. Goes inside. Dixon. But pulled back immediately by the Reading Rockets. They're doing the first step right, and then TBC bit lax on the second. Absolutely. The Rockets just need to convert those uh, finishes inside. They've shot well so far. AJ Roberts from the mid range shoots well, puts it down. Yeah, that that is AJ Roberts right there. Can really score the basketball, and uh, has kept kept TVC interested in this first quarter. Lovely pass over to him as well to get him that space. Cracknell using the screen puts down the three. Yeah, what so, a response. So far, so good on the execution for the Rockets. 17 points in the first five minutes. Very pleasing for the home team, that's for sure. 17 plays, 8. Just over five minutes gone in this contest. Adiola puts it up. Just off the mark, and that's going to trickle out of play. And we're going to have our first timeout of the contest. Robert Banks wants to talk things over with his TVC players. Talk to us about that first, well, first spell of action. Yeah, I think Coach Banks will want to be talking about uh, TBC's taking a lot of perimeter shots. Um, I think he'll want them to find the interior a little bit more and have to make Jackson play. I think for the Rockets, they look like they've scouted well. They're taking away some key things. I think um, they're able to get stops and, and run in transition, causing the, the Cavaliers to foul. Um, but they have shot well as well. We, we must remember that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, a lively contest, and I think oh, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, three and a half quarters. Now yeah, we're seeing a couple of the shots from outside that Reading have been able to get and put down, and again, just using screens, playing just really effective off the ball as well as on the ball. Absolutely, and off off ball movement is the thing that is the most important thing. You saw Dixon make a cut, a 45 cut, but he missed the layup. But it, what happens is, is if you occupy the weak side defence, one-on-one could be played more. And if one-on-one's played more, the weak side defence is attracted to the ball, so movement off the ball is key. So the Rockets have got a nice balance so far. I imagine Coach Nurizade will want to go inside a little bit more as Finn Porter checks in. Um, but it be interesting to see how both teams come out of this timeout. As well, TBC, they've had a couple of looks, they've had a couple of nice makes. But the scoring has come easier for Reading so far. 17 plays, 8. We're back underway. As Lewis Champion also into the contest for the first time for the Rockets, the former Bristol Flyer. Good ball movement on the outside. Cracknell wide open. Just short rims it. Good pressure. That's going to be Reading ball. Yeah, it was a pretty deep three from Cracknell. But again, I don't think, you, I don't think TBC will want to leave him too often um, with Rock being Rockets' leading point scorer. Long pass over the top two champion. Thought about it. Goes inside Pinnock. Good. For two. Pinnock in transition. Pinnock one on one. Either side of the coin. That's his game. Nice take from the Rockets number five. John Manning finds Shaq Lewis. Not able to find the space operating just yet. Lewis as Roberts. Good handoff there to 
Manning once again though. Porter hands in there. Manning driving. Puts up the shot. It's short. All ball. Porter. That's really gritty defense by the Rockets. On the offense now with Champion. And it is Cracknell once more. Tries it again from three. Gets it to go. Yeah, and as we just said, he is definitely not the guy to leave. And he drains another one. Great defense by Finn Porter on the mismatch there, making Manning drive. 22 plays eight. As we're going to see Adiola headed to the stripe. Foul goes on Jeremiah Jenkins. As we see that triple again from Cracknell. Beautiful make. Did he get his uh, London space taken away just a, just a touch there? Quite possibly. I think uh, Saunders was a little bit late to contest, but uh, Cracknell very reliable from the three. Gets the first to go. Adiola, first point of the contest for him. That's the second to go. TBC have 10 on the board, despite the past efforts of what is a brilliant crowd here today. Northern Valley. Yeah, it's great to see almost a packed house here for the first game post Christmas. The Rock Reading crowd has always been very good so far. Zach Powell into the contest as Cracknell. I think he is the contest right now. Yeah, really good though by the Rockets. Cavaliers went to zone in that possession. Cracknell occupying the high post. Foul, uh, foul line jumper, really nice. It is something that Reading haven't always had success against this season in the zone. As Ariola doesn't quite go, though we do have a scuffle underneath. We'll see who that goes against. So it's a push from Champion. So that's his first personal. Possession remains with TVC. Yeah, I definitely agree on your comment about the zone. It'll be interesting to see if the Cavaliers stick in it. And AJ Roberts on the outside. Eight to shoot. Adiola. Goes inside, tries to find McKindo. That bounced in now quite enough. Pep. And that's an unsportsmanlike foul. Yeah. Explain that I, one. I, I, I can't. I, <laughs> it was more like rugby. Um, I think that's probably one of the easiest calls the officials will ever have to make. Um, just got him round the hips. And, uh, yeah, a couple of changes for the Cavaliers from that. So we're going to see Saunders back into the contest with Olerarin as Robert sits down and McKindo. And he's played a lot of FIBA basketball, McKindo. He, he knows what that call's going to bring. Yeah, he certainly has. And uh, I think that... Uh, it was more of a frustration foul than anything else as Cracknell makes it his first one. Um, and I think McIndoo's quite smart with, uh, with that sort of thi uh, things, but uh, yeah, in that moment, probably frustration got the better of him. Two goes, and then possession coming up for the Rockets. I mean, that is why an unsportsmanlike foul it is such a big call and a, and a big conversation around it. Could that light a spark into TVC? Yeah, you, you never know, really. I think... Um, it, it certainly is, you're right, carries a lot of weight, the unsportsmanlike foul. And uh, let's see, is the, the TBC remain in the zone? Reading looking to the inside now with Porter. Beautiful finish with the right hand. Yeah, excellent work by the Rockets to get the ball down inside. Coach Nerizzotto very happy with that. More changes coming for TBC. Can they get themselves back on the scoreboard? Looking to work down low, Hart. No oh, good from the middle of the paint. Porter, again, secure in the rebound, doing a great job on the boards, Reading. Cracknell, after that dramatic fake pass. 14 with the hold, that's Aidan Saunders, first personal for him. And that's going to put TBC into the penalties. We're going to see Rocco Dominovic for the first time. He replaces Saunders. Absolutely, and I would say to you, so far, it's been a very mature performance by the Rockets. Their shot selection has been really good. They've certainly frustrated the Cavaliers, and an 18-point lead already in the game is... Uh, you can see that the quality of basketball they're playing so far, can they keep it going? That will be the question. 
Yeah, I'm not going off any numbers right now. You've got the stats over with you, but um, it looks efficient. Everything they're doing has that efficiency of movement, of shooting, of scoring, all of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Troy Cracknell certainly helping that, being uh, three from four from the field and two from three from the uh, three-point line and, of course, hasn't missed a free throw yet. That's great stuff for Reading. They've got 30 on the board in this first period of action. Long way left to go. And that's good from Olerering, did exactly what he needed to do. Immediate response. Yeah, got himself into the lane. Really good finishing from eight to ten feet. And a, a much-needed bucket for the Cavaliers. Jenkins handed off to Powell, got it back, goes underneath Porter with the spin move. Tried to find Cracknell. And a turnover, really, unf and another turnover back to Reading. Porter, and he put the shot down. I don't know if it's going to count. Yeah, no, I think an offensive foul has been called against Jenkins before the, the dump off. Interesting to see our uh, leaders in the game. And Troy Cracknell's leading all scorers with 14. I mean, that's a solid day's work. That, 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 yes, it <laughs> certainly is. And I think that uh, that's definitely something the Cavaliers are going to have to address come the end of this first period if they are to get back in this game. So again, the the towel crew. The towel have they got a name here at the Rockets? No, not yet, but we do definitely need to get them uh, a name because they do a, a wonderful job and it's great to see it's our, uh, some of our under-12 players coming in, volunteering and helping out. And that's, uh, that's what makes, you know, from a biased point of view, the Rockets a, a, a really good family club. If I'm allowed to say that, Darren. I mean, you, you just have. I mean, you just, frankly, okay. he's got Rockets merch on all sorts. Oh, I know, so sorry. <laughs> that is what is so special about National League basketball, though. You know, the youth players... Absolutely. Everybody playing their part, making such a great atmosphere around the game. As Dominovic looking to drive in, looks out to Olerarin. Olerarin gets him moving. That shot doesn't go. Shaq Lewis, though, great rebound and puts up the mid range Jake. So there you go. There, there's the key. Shaq Lewis with a much needed rebound and was able to score from that. And if the Rockets don't contest that and don't take that away, it's going to be a difficult, it's going to be difficult to keep the lead. Stay in their zone, TVC. As Cracknell cracks it. Yeah, that's that, that high post jumper again. And uh, Cracknell is absolutely money from there. Lovely make. Adeola kicks to the corner. Tolerarin back to Adeola. Back to Tolerarin. Corner three goals. Yeah, and that's the thing with Adeola. Excellent penetration. And he's got his man in the corner to knock down. Good screen set, Cracknell doesn't go from outside. And that's going to do it, period one in the books. Rockets up, 32-17 over TVC after the first 10. Ben, talk to us. Yeah, well, uh, a fantastic display, I think, by the Rockets uh, against man and zone. Um, I think that, was a, that, that last shot, although it didn't go from Cracknell, it was a really good one, just some pick and roll, and they pinned in the back guy for Cracknell to get open to shoot it. Um, they're finding a lot of success. The game plan for Rockets is going really, really well. What do TBC need to do to get back in this game? Well, they need to take care of Cracknell. He's leading all scorers in the game with 16. He's got half the Rockets' points. And they also need to make sure that they, uh, they run their offense a little bit better and try to exploit some of the mismatches. And I don't think they've done that so far. Shaq Lewis has come in and provided a little bit of a spark on the offensive glass. I think that's something that they need to, to keep pushing towards. Yeah, you talk about the glass, it'd be really interesting to see those rebound numbers because it looks like to me, just again, I test Reading having the better of the battle on the glass, having the better of the that inside game. Though we have seen Shaq Lewis, his size, his strength working on the inside. What, what are you seeing with the battle on the boards? Yeah, I, I agree with that. It, it's, it's still quite close. It's 10 to 7 uh, at the end of the first quarter. But I think it's the type of rebound and the rebound intent that uh, the Rockets have seems to have the edge over the, uh, the Cavaliers so far. But as I say, I think, I think that that's going to be uh, definitely something that the, uh, the Cavaliers go to in this second quarter. So we are just about to return to action. We've got all five, all ten players back on the floor. TBC out there very early. Remember, you're watching 
NBL Division 1 action live from Lyndon Valley here on NBL Live. Thank you for joining us this Sunday afternoon as we're back underway. Rocco Dominovic. Good pressure there from Champion. Dominovic. Oh, beautiful pass inside. Jack Lewis gets it to go. Perfect start from TVC. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good screen from Shaq Lewis. Rolled hard to the rim. Good pass. Simple basketball. No Cracknell on the floor right now for Reading. So it's going to be interesting to see what TVC can do in his absence. His champion puts down the three. Yeah, really nice balance, though, inside-outside from the Rockets. And the champion, a pretty good catch-and-shoot guy. As that's brilliant hustle play. It's classed as a hell ball. Olerarin, not entirely sure how that happened. Reese Pinnock with the hustle. Yeah, more like a ruck, I thought. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so the possession arrow goes the way of the rocket. So absolutely a win there for Reese Pinnock. And you know, as a, as a player, as a coach, how does that make you feel? Seeing players diving for loose balls or even picking passing lanes to, to force turnovers i think you'll find a lot of coaches talk about that but i think um it's it's the timing for for pinnock he really is excellent at choosing his moments to be like that um, and i think that defensive leadership is something that you know every coach craves and it gives a real lift to the team rockets back in possession goes underneath jack lewis contests is a judge to have fouled Jordan Jackson, that's his first personal of the contest. Yeah, good to see Jackson going to the foul line. I think uh, the next step for him is to, to try and convert some of these uh, inside touches. But nevertheless, two shots, always a good outcome. First goes for Jackson. That's a... Uh, they need to rearrange your players around the paint. Jackson splits them, but somebody stepped over too early. That somebody would have been Shaq Lewis, so he gets a second bite of the cherry. Yeah, keen and eager. And he gets the second at the second attempt. We're going to see Zach Powell checking in to the contest. Played his basketball in Ireland the last two seasons. For the Sligo All Stars. That's, oh, that's again Reese Pinnock. And that's going to be a foul. Rockets want an unsportsmanlike. Official's going to talk it over. Yeah, I, I would say that if we're going to watch a re. Are we going to watch a replay here? I think we are. That's yeah. a beautiful bit of play, firstly by Pinnock. So it's a tough one because he is the last guy. Uh, so let's see what the officials uh, come up with. How's that fence for you? Real splintery? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying really hard here. <laughs> so it's uh, just a normal foul, or a regulation foul, I suppose. First personal for Dominovic. Interesting. Definitely one for the referees' union to talk over. It's going to be lively. On the Twitter later on I can see how that call was made for me that seems like a, a reasonable outcome yeah I think the, the point was he, he didn't really intend to foul him no it was, it was, a, it a, was a player more of a ball. clumsy foul but he is the last guy mm. so yeah it's uh, it's an interesting one for sure champion gives to Powell looking down low finds Jackson in the end kicks back to the top champion gets him jumping doesn't go. I'm watching that right leg of Olerarin. Oh, he looks okay. It's fine. As he went past champion, it's a bit of an awkward motion. As the Minovich waits in no time, getting over the timeline. They do have the full 24. Hands off. Threes on the way. Adiola. Classic Bode Adiola there. Draining the three, getting his team some much needed points. Powell. Up and down for two. Straight into the paint. Puts it home. Yeah, the uh, Rockets finding a lot of success around the high post area. Rockets wasting no time. Shaq Lewis wasting no time. Beautiful finish. 
After the spin move. And Shaq Lewis has really got his team going um, in the, well, since he's come into the game, for sure. Powell on the outside. Davis. Looks like Dixon, should I say. Good ball movement. Jackson mid-range, just out of range. Oh, Adolola. Skip pass over to Dominovic. Got the screen he wanted. Strong screen by Shaq Lewis. Adolola taking his time. Eight seconds. Puts it. The triple doesn't go from Dominovic. You can see the Cavaliers playing better basketball now. They're trying to move the basketball, trying to make the Rockets have to defend different actions. Powell gets it to the mid-range. Jumpers on the way. It's down. He's headed to the line for one more. I was just about to say, that is a tough shot from Zach Powell. How he got that to go, I, I don't know, but uh, great one. And a, a technical foul, I think, has been called, Darren. That's right. Um, Marko Dominovic arguing the call. Gets himself teed up. So we've had technical fouls, we've had unsportsmanlike fouls. It's not been the best so far for TVC. Yeah, and that's a tough one for him because he's picked out foul number three. Yeah, foul two and three in very, very short order. So, of course, if he gets another technical or another unsportsmanlike, that'll be his day done. Certainly will, but I think he, uh, he seems to be quite a heady player, so I think he'll uh, just readjust. It's always a tough one when you get a what he would feel a tough call against him a reaction and you get penalized for that as well that's the so that'll be the free throw on the initial foul Zach Powell gets it to go they went two of two at the line to go with that two points four point play doesn't go at Alola Dent Breeze watching that roll around there absolutely Gonna have a timeout coming up next time for the visitors as champion. Bounce pass to Pinnock. Pinnock kicks over. Dixon. Good from outside. And that's gonna be timeout taken by TBC. And a great, great lesson for our younger viewers in, in terms of using the pick and roll. Didn't work the first time, use the second time, change the side, attack skip to the opposite side and Dixon was there to knock down the three nice play from the Rockets it's gonna be really interesting to see how both these sides come out after this timeout because initially our first time out we saw TVC take they came out really well they put together a play exactly how you want and then Reading again reasserted themselves in this game yeah Reading so far with a quite an efficient performance I would say um, as we mentioned earlier on, who shot, shot the ball well. The Cavaliers look like they're trying to run a, a little bit more offence, trying to get their, their main players uh, the ball to score. Um, but they're really finding it difficult to stop the Rockets at the moment. That, that is down to some really good shooting. Um, but also, you know, their shot selection as well. Rockets getting stops and getting out on the break is, is hurting the Cavaliers at this moment in time. Now, of course, TVC, they do have a couple of different names in today's game. That So is that, is that a bit of a gelling or a re-gelling, I suppose? Could be. I mean, as we as we spoke about, Shaq Lewis is a, an influential player and they've been without him for, a, for quite a time. So that adjustment can take a little bit of time um, uh, as well as, you know, different personnel, different lineups. Uh, Coach Banks is trying to find the right line line up for his team at the moment so uh, yeah let's see I, I think I, I expect a much better performance in the second half for sure so the reason that you're on oh now we're on the uh, the action just talking things over at the table right now is Robert Banks as we've got number 30 Seb Emanalo into the contest and he I tell you he really did impress me in the overtime win last time by uh, over Lefka he is a great young talent. Uh, we've played against him uh, in junior games, and he's been, been really good. I've been really impressed with his athleticism, his IQ, his ability to score the ball. Um, so, yeah, it's great to see him be part of Division One. I, I really love it when we see younger players um, play in the, in the top level of English basketball. Yeah, he's definitely contributing 5.4 points per game so far this season, 1.5 rebounds in... In a team that you know nobody's really dominating the rebounds, it seems like a real team effort. 
you know, those are, those are healthy numbers for a young man just finding his way in the game. Absolutely. And I, th I think there's nothing that substitutes playing men's basketball uh, when you're yep. a junior player. If you're, if you're physically and mentally ready for that, I think it's a, it's a great, uh, great addition. A lot of, lot of clubs are doing that, especially in Division Three. Um, are able to expose the, our young talent to, to that level of basketball. It's great. So, in fact, he started that game against Loughborough, so tough game on the road. That sort of responsibility at his age. It's got a bright, bright future. So we're back underway on a raring met at the line, up and down. And that can't go either after the second one. We'll see who that goes on. That's been called on Pinnock. That foul, so two shots coming up for Shaq Lewis. Yep, and another another rebound from Shaq Lewis. Um, and another two shots for him. So he's uh, he's definitely coming in and doing the job that he's been assigned to do, that's for sure. And there it is. Reese Pinnock coming in from behind, just a tap on the arm. And I mean, with a player like him who's so such a defensive dynamo do you always want him diving in at that time or just let the bigs handle it on the other facing up yeah i think uh, i think that the situation there was um the box out needs to be better but you do want your guards coming in to rebound bigs can't always box out and rebound at the same time um as two from two i think from the line there Shaq for the caps shaq lewis dropping them both down trying to chip away at this lead it's 20 and that will help i don't know that can't go, and two does. Goldson is the call. Yeah, one of the first real, you know, glaring mistakes from the Rockets, and uh, of course, Bode Adelaide is going to punish that. Uh, but it's still a healthy lead for the home team. <laughs> 18 in the second quarter. You'll take that as Isaac Round into the contest for the first time. Sends it down low. Sends it back out. Beautiful skip pass over to Powell. Powell. Back to round, long two goals. Yeah, great stuff from the youngster Isaac Round coming into the game and nailing his first shot. Can't find Shaq Lewis now. They can. Beautiful work inside Shaq Lewis. Looked like he had nowhere to go. Only one place he went. And that was to score. Yeah, right now that is that is the heartbeat of the, the Cavaliers team and something the Rockets are not doing a great job of is defending him champion absolutely puts it through the eye of a needle there to Dixon Dixon long two misses everything coming away is Olerarin TVC bit of pep in their step right now and Alola gives to Roberts just short in the triple Jack Lewis though puts it back he, he wants to foul and the timeout has been taken we can assume that's by the Red and Rockets. It certainly is, and uh, Coach Nurazade not happy with the uh, rebound contest. And, uh, you know, as we said, Darren, I think that Shaq Lewis has come in and, and, you know, him coming back into this TBC team is a, is a real benefit for them. And he's just keeping them in touch, you know. I think for them, if they could get the deficit to 10 before the, the halftime break, they're right in this contest. Um, and we can hear Coach Nurizade really barking at his team because he's not happy that Shaq Lewis has three offensive rebounds in the last three possessions. And between the timeouts, it's a 2-8 it's a run on the side of TVC. They're doing a fantastic job as it gets loud in Bluffin Valley. They're, they've done a great job of executing what they want to do and capitalising on any mistakes from yeah, Reading. Yeah, absolutely. And we said they had a bit more of a balanced attack, and I like what Adelola's come in and do. Done. Sorry, his penetration has really opened up spaces for, for Lewis inside and uh, AJ Roberts on the perimeter. So they've got a nice unit out on the floor at the moment, and the, the zone has seems to have just stifled the Rockets' offence in these last couple. It's Porter into the contest, and Cracknell... Has come back out. Is that his first spell of this second quarter? As Porter gets it to go from baseline. Certainly think it is, but a, a foul has been called on Jamai Jenkins. I think that's foul number three, because that's, that's going to be a big call. It is indeed. Foul number three. And I'm not sure if we've seen Jenkins at all in the second period. 
until just then. No, I don't think we have, so that's uh, a quick minute. But the Rockets uh, found, finding the short corner, finding the high post against the zone well. Finn Porter knocking that one down. So a loose champion back into the contest. A good player to have as triples on the way from the youngster. It's good. Seb Eminalo. And as soon as you let Adelola get in front of you, he opens up a whole different world, finds the shooter in the corner, and a great job by the young man. Tremendous pace as finds Finn Porter. Powell just kicks to the corner. Cracknell gets him jumping, puts it down from two. And because Troy Cracknell started this game so well from the perimeter, he now opens up the, the mid-range game. Nice play by the Rockets' leader. Adalola on the outside, wanting that movement. Clean strip. They get it back. Adalola puts it down. And one Zach Powell coming in from behind on the foul. And I think this is this is testament to the Cavaliers. They play with such high intensity. They haven't given every, anything up. And they've kept the ball alive there. And I, I have to tell you, Adalola's done a great job getting that spark going again within the Cavaliers. And he'll go to the line to see if he can make it a three-point play. And Alola, the charity strike. Gets it to go. Three-point play, the old-fashioned way. Absolutely. That makes it 52-38. Absolutely barnstorming first half here for you. First game back after the winter break as Dixon gets it to go. The mid-range once again alive on the baseline. Yeah, absolutely. The Rockets shooting really well, as we said, from the from the short corner. As Adalola driving again. I mean, Arlo finds Shaq Lewis. Shaq Lewis trying to battle his way inside against Porter. He does, and then lets us all know what he thinks. Absolutely. And, uh, Shaq Lewis is, is finding points really easy to come by at the moment. That's going to be a concern for the Rockets. Just like that, the lead was down to 14. Porter, drive, kick, champion. Got to go fast, four seconds. Cracknell from the strike. It's good for two. <laughs> really, Troy Cracknell off one leg now, uh, scoring at will. And that Vince. takes 22 points for him. Oloraren can't get it to go. An offensive rebound. Shaq Lewis from outside. What can't he do? He is having a great game. I am loving what I'm seeing from Shaq Lewis as he's really keeping his team in this one. Cracknell. Looked off the pass. Dixon. Inside to Porter. Likes what he can see. Can't get it to go. The putback stays out. Oloraren. Finds Roberts. Beautiful move. Can't get the finish to go, AJ Roberts. A little bit of rust from both teams around the rim there, by, by all accounts. They seem to be shooting well, but uh, the touch may be something that needs to come. <laughs> we've, we've all wintered well. Champion on the outside. Finds Cracknell. Cracknell goes in, kicks back out. Triple at the break. Doesn't go. Oloraren, straight back was Isaac Round. Alive to the danger of Oloraren. Adalola. Taking it himself. Foul headed to the stripe for two. Foul called on the youngster, Isaac Round. Yeah, and that's a tough matchup. Adalola using his uh, veteran play, shall we say? I think we, I think we can say that we about Bowie now. We can absolutely say that. Um, the career he's had in this league, we can say. Absolutely. To, uh, to exploit round uh, on the one-on-one -on -one there uh, and he deserves to go to the line for two yes the first to go the second is off the mark for the 86.7 cent shooter Coming into today's contest, there's Porter looking to get those points right back. Dixon does from the outside. Yeah, good balance shot from Ben Dixon there. Second three of the afternoon and really helping the Rockets keep that scoreboard ticking over. AJ Roberts looks for the pass down low. Great interception. Porter 
Goes for a little finger roll. I think everybody in the gym was expecting something else. Beautiful triple from outside. Olerarin assist goes to Eminalo. A really frustrating one if you're the opposing coach. You're missing at the rim in transition three on one and giving up a three. And that's kept Thames Valley Cavaliers right in it at 12. 59 plays 47. It is not even half time as Isaac Round doesn't go from the mid range. Eminalo. Mr. Adalola. Triples on the way. Drops it down, Bode. And a second timeout called by Reading Rockets as the lead is now down to nine. The score after 19 minutes <laughs> one, and less than one second, 59-50. Uh, this is outrageous. Well, it's quite incredible. Obviously, both sets of players have been well rested after the <laughs> Christmas break. But it's an absolute barn burner. We've got, I'm just checking the stats here. We've got Troy Cracknell's got 20 for the Rockets. Shaq Lewis has 17. And a whole bunch of others are scoring. It's, uh, it's been a really high scoring game. Both teams, especially the Cavaliers in the second quarter, they poured in 30 points. It's 30 27. Sorry, 33 27 to the Cavs in this uh, in this second 10 minutes. Shaq Lewis, I mean, what an impact he's had. First game back after, after a lengthy injury layoff. And when he was first in, he wasn't getting that space he was probably used to hoping for. So it's changed. What's that something been? I think that the uh, the Cavaliers have found their penetration a lot, lot better. They've, they've got some stops. They're able to play in transition. Adelode is able to drive and kick to shooters which means that Shaq Lewis is a little bit more open in the interior, and he's, he's done a great job on the offensive glass as well. Got to mention how fantastic the live crowd is, and of course, thank you to you at home as well for joining us this Sunday for this live NBL D1 action between the Red Rockets and the Thames Valley Cavaliers. We've got 21 minutes left. Well, maybe overtime, who knows with this game. Who let's, knows, but uh, you're definitely getting a treat here with 109 points scored so far <laughs> in the contest. We are back underway. Under 60 to play in this first half. Lewis champion. Dixon. Redding Rockets with Cracknell. Goes inside. Great defensive pressure. Doesn't go. TVC. And they close this lead further. Oh, Rarin. Oh, what a finish. Yeah, that is a top, top draw finish. And now the Cavaliers defending the high post a lot better in that last possession. Cracknell really struggled at the rim. That's Olerarin picking, passing lanes. Is he going to go it alone? Doesn't keep it in bounds. I think he had that lead pass there for Eminalo. But Olerarin, and I'm, I don't know how this comes across on camera, he is so fast. Yeah, he really is, and uh, he's definitely a, a match for, for Reese Pinnock, two, two of the quickest guards probably in NBL Division One. Um, as Isaac Brown came back in for, for Ben Dixon, Coach Nurizade not happy with that turnover. His champion gets over the timeline, uses as much as now as possible. Looking for that final possession. There's about one second between shot clock and game clock. Ten to shoot. For Redding. Champion gives the pal to the corner. Cracknell off one leg. Can't go. Three seconds for TVC. The heave. Doesn't go, but you win the bet against it. Absolutely. The end of the first half. It is 59-52 to the Reading Rockets. Ben, just if you're possible, if able, summarise well, the first half. Yeah, let's take a take a deep breath because that was absolutely as a, a, what we would call a barn burner. Oh yes. Um, great start from the Rockets out of the blocks, really, really quick, playing really efficient basketball. But the Cavaliers didn't go away. They were as much as nearly 18 to 20 points down, but they've trimmed the, the deficit to seven because they've got a lot of talent on their roster. They've gone through a guy who's been out for a while, Shaq Lewis. He's been a really big impact. Bode Adalola has really contributed oh, yeah. to that. Um, and it's now a seven point game. And we said midway through that second quarter, if the Cavaliers could get the deficit under 10, they're right in this game. And boy, are they right in this game. 100%. I mean, from Reading Rockets, let's talk about where their success has lain so far in this first half. Well, I think they found they had found success against the zone, but 
it's stifled them a little bit. And because they've taken more difficult shots, it's given the, the Cavaliers a chance to play in transition, which means the Cavs are converting more, which then means the Rockets have to play more half-court offense. And that's really, that's really, I think, the, the story of that second half, uh, second quarter, sorry. But giving up 35 points against the Cavs is going to be of a mighty concern, I think, for the home team. But who cares? What a game we've got here. Well, that's going to do it for this first half here from Loddon Valley in Reading. It is the Reading Rockets 59 52 against the Thames Valley Cavaliers. You're watching NBA Live Division 1.
A very warm welcome back into Loddon Valley. Massive shout out to all our sponsors making this possible here. NBL D1 action live on YouTube. What a game we have had so far in this first 20 minutes of action. Of course, it remains 59-52 to the Rain Rockets over Thames Valley Cavaliers. Darren Paul, Ben Fisher along to bring you all the action. Ben, what are the keys for the second half? Let's start with the visitors, because they're in the deficit. What do they need to do to continue turning this game around? You know what? I think they just need to continue doing the same thing as they were in that second quarter. They've really found a way to score. Um, they found a way to, to attack the offensive glass. And they seem to be finding a way just to slightly stem the Rockets. Can the Rockets keep up their shooting uh, percentages? We will have to see. But uh, I think momentum-wise, the Cavaliers actually have that going into this second half. Absolutely, as our leaders in the game, Cracknell and Lewis, both with 20 points apiece. I mean, what an impact Lewis has had. Yeah, I mean, Shaq Lewis has probably been the difference maker for the Thames Valley Cavaliers so far. Come into the game, he's rebounded, he's, uh, he's scored inside, he's knocked down a three from the top of the key. He's a tough matchup at this moment in time. Is there anything more that you want to see from, from Reading? Anything that you want to see them change? Yeah, I mean, defensively, he's got to be better for them, for sure. You know, I think they're hemorrhaging 35 points in that, that second quarter. So they've got to take care of the defensive glass. Uh, they've got to get stops. They've got to get out and run um, and, and do what they did in the first quarter because they did that really, really well and they were really efficient. And I think the, the second thing is is limiting live ball turnovers. That was something that crept into the, the second quarter for the Rockets. And they probably conceded eight points just off giving, giving the Cavaliers the ball. So... Uh, yeah, that's probably an area for them, but uh, yeah, it's really exciting and it is hot enough in here, that's for sure. So the crowd, a brilliant crowd, and packed out. Lodden Valley doing the wave as the both fives are back out on the floor. Returning to pretty much starting units. Aidan Saunders uh, is on the bench. Shaq Lewis starts the second half. And number four is missing, Jeremiah Jenkins, he's on three fouls, he's got a bit of foul trouble. Lewis Champion is starting in his stead. So a couple of people wanting a shout out from you. Yeah, just giving away, that's our strength and conditioning, that's the strength and conditioning team of uh, Reading Rockets. We are back underway, 20 to go in this one. Beautifully poised, not a rare in. It's to Shaq Lewis on the outside, triple, just off the mark, when you've got the hot hand. Oh, my goodness, and a low low into Olerarin. Yes, not an ideal start for the Rockets, just giving the ball away there off a, off a good stop, probably. Shaq Lewis shooting a contested three is probably what the Rockets would have wanted. Rockets first time down the floor for them. Dixon kicks out to champion, triples on the way. Doesn't go into the hands of AJ Roberts. So a perfect start for TBC. Manning couldn't get it to go with the soft touch. That's a great pass. Gets it back. Dixon now finishes. That's a beautiful three-man action. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good from the Rockets. A lot more balanced. And uh, they've turned over that, that early turnover that they had. Adeola gives off to Olerarin, puts on the burners, can't go. Cracknell, and we've got a, got a foul, I think we've got a technical foul. Nice. So that is going to be a tech on Olerarin. And a conversation with our match official behind the basket, saying, hey, that's a push. Yeah, tough one there. Looked like there was a little bit of contact. Olerarin was uh, quite frustrated with the no call. And, uh, yeah, ref gives out the second tech of the game. Again, I mentioned, as it goes, I mentioned his speed. When you're a player that fast, that athletic, in the air, any small bit of contact is going to have some impact. And that is going to be, let's, you know, that's going to be a little bit scary. That's going to have a thought in your mind. It certainly is. And I think uh, it would, it would, one we'd need to watch again because, it, you know, if both players are going vertical and you've got the, you know, the, mm. the, the cylinder and stuff like that, I think... Uh, it's, it's always a difficult call to make, so, uh, yeah. A frustrating one for the offensive player on that possession. Champion going in, met by Shaq Lewis. Champion stays down, and that's going to bring out a stoppage. So hopefully, I think too severe there for Lewis Champion. 
He does stay down. Trainer out to him. Again, I think Shaq Lewis on that attempt got just a bit of ball, and that's what set that shot on its way wide. Yeah, and it's quite a tough game to officiate. We see a replay here of Champion going to the basket. And, yeah, it's a tough one from this particular angle to see how much contact uh, there was. Um, but, it, you know, when, when players are driving to the basket at speed, as you mentioned earlier, I think it is, it is hard to officiate. So it's, but it's something that the, the officials need to definitely tighten up upon um, so we don't have any uh, uh, injuries or any serious injuries. I mean, from where, I'm, from where I was saying, I, my comment, just to clarify, I thought Jack Lewis got ball. But yeah, it did. On the it, shot, and that's... Absolutely, and as I say, I think it was a really difficult angle for us to see. Mm. It's whether he kind of followed through with his body. Mm. It, it, difficult to tell. It's certainly... He didn't... Uh, he was not trying to cause any contact, oh, no, that's no, for sure. No, no. Um, but Reese Pinnock then with a, with a big offensive rebound for the Rockets before that stoppage, and uh, that's, that's something that he does really well as well from the guard position. I mean, Pinnock, we, we've seen that the impact as we see a replay of, of the player once again. It's almost like Champion goes into Shaq Lewis's shoulder and that's what catches him when he extends the block. So that's a, it's a really difficult one, really difficult one. But uh, great news is, is Lewis Champion is up and about. Um, will return to the bench, but uh, hopefully no long-lasting damage there. Yeah, making his way back to the bench, received treatment from both sets of physios. Always, always good to see, sort of thing. And as Pinnock comes back underway for the Rockets, Dixon gets out to Cracknell. That's a tough contested shot, doesn't go at the buzzer. Had to put it up. And now Adalola, spin move, offensive foul. Great charge taken by Dixon. We do hope we get to see that one again. Yeah, Adalola just nonchalantly shaking his head there. Uh, a veteran versus veteran, you could say, on that one. Oh, yeah. Um, but it would be interested to see if Dixon did indeed have position. And Dixon triple <laughs> insult to injury. It goes. Yeah, that was a big bucket for the Rockets just to get back to their double-digit lead. And Dixon's been very efficient from the perimeter so far this evening. AJ Roberts on the outside gives it to John Manning. Ayola puts it up. Doesn't go. Really tough contest there by Reese Pinnock. His defense has been absolutely on point so far. Dixon gets him jumping, goes inside. Swatted by Lewis. There is a foul on the play. And it is going to go on number 20, Shaq Lewis. Yeah, it, it looked like he got uh, ball and arm there. Um, and, and again, Dixon, very smart play. He's made a number of threes, so he's got the defence running at him as he misses the first free throw. But he's got the defence running at him, shot fakes, gets to the mid-range and, uh, and gets fouled there. Splits him at the line, 66.7% from the stripe coming into today's game. Every little helps, 66-54, that's a lot more healthy for Reading. Having been up 20 later in the contest, oh, stripped by Dixon, and that's come off the knee of Ariola. my goodness. Yeah, and you you know, Pinnock and, and Dixon are two very good defenders for the Rockets, and they're working together really well against Adelola there, because uh, that's certainly his strength. Champion back in from the trainer's room, as that three can't go there from Cracknell. Now, Oloraren. Trying to put the burners on. <laughs> Dixon loves his matchup right now. Lewis, spin move, fading away. Can't go into the hands of Pinnock. So far, Reading can be very pleased with their third period of play. Reese Pinnock gets it to go again. As I said to you just before we uh, started this third quarter, um, you know, if Reading could get stops and then they can play in transition, that would be really healthy for them. And they have. They made Shaq Lewis take a tough shot that last possession. Three's on the way. Can't go from El Arrarin. Pulled down by Dixon. And I think we are going to see a timeout coming. Did wonder. 
Thomas, it's Jenkins in the contest. He's on three fouls. Kicks to Dixon. Thought about it for a second. Gets inside to the mid-range. It goes. And that's all she wrote for right now. TVC need to talk things over as Reading, their lead, back out. 70 plays 54. Yeah, and we're just seeing a replay of that real tough pull-up by Jemiah Jenkins, but it is something that he can definitely do. Uh, and he finds nothing but string on that one. And, and Rockets have come out in this uh, third quarter with a little bit more spice at the defensive end, which is giving them some uh, real opportunities in transition, and they've pushed that advantage out again. I'm, I'm going to assume, I don't like to guess the coaches, but I'm going to assume uh, that, that was a major focus of the conversation from head coach uh, Nazarade, especially the way Pinnock and um, Dixon have really stepped up their defensive game. Yes, I would imagine so. I don't think any coach is, is happy conceding over 50 points yeah. in a half. Um, so I would imagine both coaches have, have, have looked at that, um, especially for, you know, the, I think the, the Rockets have quite a talented backcourt defensively, um, and we can see that in terms of how they're, how they're defending. I think Coach Banks, is, he's struggled to find uh, a way just to stem um, the Rockets' transition and also their kind of uh, penetration, but it'd be interesting to see if he goes back to the zone that helped them in that second quarter. There are a couple of big momentum plays as uh, Bode listening into the Rockets huddle. There are a couple of real momentum plays, and you get one, two, three of those in a row. What does that do to your morale as uh, when it's going the other way? I think nowadays, because teams come back from really big deficits, I think it's not as such an impact as it as it has been in the past. I think it still can be. It depends on your personnel, but I think you know the Cavaliers have come back from big before, so that's what they'll be saying again. Underneath to Alalola, beautiful make on the find from Roberts. Again, exactly what the coach will have ordered. Immediate response out of the timeout. That's a foul called on Jordan Jackson. Illegal screen right into the back of Victor Olerarin. Yeah, definitely like to see that one again. It's, uh, Maybe just wasn't quite set when the screen was uh, delivered. Shake Sheriff looking for options. Finds it with Olerarin. Beautiful pass inside. Shaq Lewis at the stripe. It's good. Yeah, the TBC good timeout from them. Little four zip run out of it. They're in their 2 3 zone by the looks of things as well. Going down low to Jackson. Thought about the shot. Penetrates, gets it to go off the glass. Yeah, much better from Jordan Jackson. Getting to the hoop this time. Remaining, doing a good job remaining behind the zone. Difficult coverage, and he lays it in for two. Sheriff looking to drive. Finds Shaq Lewis on the outside. Adiola. Sheriff gets it to go. Long two. And that just quiets the crowd. It certainly does. It was tremendous on-ball defence from uh, Reese Pinnock there, but they, uh, TBC were patient, found their man. Jenkins to Jackson. Jackson off the glass again. He has his eye in. Beautiful, mate. Yeah, back-to-back -back buckets for Jordan Jackson. That'll give him some confidence. And Zach Powell ready to check in next time by for the Rockets as Oleraren goes for that spin move. And a foul is called. I suspect that'll be on Cracknell. We will see. It is on Cracknell. And straight away, Robert Banks was about to send Dominovich. He's changed his mind. So, two at the stripe for Olerarin. Would you like to know his percentage before or after they make the shots? Well, I, I imagine they're going to be quite high. <laughs> oh no, he's missed. I, assuming my preparation has been correct, yep. 65% from the free throw. Okay. Splits him at the strike. And it's down to 13, the deficit. 
triples on the way, Jenkins, too deep, back iron. Jack Lewis, a little slow to get back up after a very combative rebound. Adiola goes outside, Sheriff thought about the long two. Stripped into the hands of Pinnock. Cracknell puts on the burners, kicks it to the corner. Beautiful three ball. Jeremiah Jenkins. Yeah, and that's a much better shot from Jenkins. He, he pulled the trigger really early in the last possession, but great transition play for three. Sheriff using his strength, battling to the basket. Kicks out now to Adeola. Goes inside, Shaq Lewis throws it down. I'd like to see a little bit more of Adeola and, uh, and Lewis in the pick and roll. I think that's, a, that's, that's pretty good for, for the Cavaliers. Al can't go from the mid-range two, but putting it back is Reese Pinnock. He is having himself a day. Yeah, and those are the type of baskets that are infuriating for, for coaches at the on the defensive end of things. Adiola off the glass is good for two. And now we're back to that second period style of just a real slugfest. Yeah, we uh, we spoke at half-time off Mike about Will the scoring slow down and it doesn't have appeared to so far? Delight, Touchwood, delighted to see as an offensive foul. Cracknell, and he's going to argue that, but you saw his elbow come up and... One way or the other, you've given a, a referee a decision to make. You have. Uh, Try not to do that. Adelola with the wry smile there as well. Good play, and, he, and it, you're right, offensive foul, drew it. And, uh, yeah, it was a, a heady play from the Cavs number five. Slowing things down as we take it over the timeline. Sheriff for TVC. Looking to get 2023 off to a hot start. Going inside, can't finish. Good rebound, Cracknell. That's been sent back, but only as far as Pinnock. Beautiful pass to Powell, thrown away. Going too quick there. Little two-man game as Roberts puts it home. Yeah, a bit of an odd pass there by Powell. It looked like he was uh, open at the rim, and uh, you certainly don't want to throw it the way of where three t uh, opposing players are. Shots up off the mark, and that's been swatted. It's going to stay with the Rockets. Pinnock just holding his left leg as he came down for that. As champion back onto the floor. No, after you. No, after you. All right, then. No worries. Put it home. Outside, champion. Goes in, Cracknell fouled in the act of shooting. That's going to be Shaq Lewis with the foul. Can you double check? I think that's two. Oh, it's three. Never doubt yourself. <laughs> yeah, three fouls there for uh, Shaq Lewis. And uh, nice play again from Cracknell. Uh, he's really found success with the... Uh, with the pull-up game, but uh, his scoring's definitely uh, slowed in this uh, third quarter. What I will say, though, is as he makes his first, his scoring sure may have slowed. He's currently on 22 points. That'll take it to now. But what hasn't has been his overall impact on this game. He is still one of the main men on that floor. Yeah, definitely. When you're scoring. Um, that then leads to you being more of a facilitator because you, you've got defence concentrating on you, which is, opens up other gaps for your teammates. So, yeah, he's doing a good job. Goes one of two at the strike. Looked like players entered early, but... Allowed to continue, Jack Lewis. This is a good patient ball movement on the outside from TVC. Jack Lewis, open for a second. Lewis and Cracknell, though, are battling. And a foul. Called on Pinnock. Oh, sorry, Cracknell. My apologies. That's his third personal. Yeah, I have to say, I think that's probably a, a, a tough call. I really liked uh, Shaq Lewis going at Troy Cracknell. I think that was uh, really good on the mismatch. We'll, we'll see a replay here. Um, as Cracknell cuts him off, it's on the chest, on the chest. And, uh, yeah, I... Not sure. Not sure. I don't know what you think on that one, Darren. Nope. Not sure. <laughs> yeah. Not there sure is go. what I'm going to go with. Fence sitters. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's quite comfortable on this one. 
It's one of those where you can see it go either way from me as Adenola puts in the triple. So all in all, a great set of possessions. Get a foul on one of the main opposition players and sink a triple to narrow this lead to 10. 80 plays 70. We've still got 11 minutes left of this contest. Oh. Good ball movement, Lewis at the break. Champion gets it to go. Yeah, the uh, hot shooting from both teams hasn't stopped. There was two really big plays. Uh, Adalola had Dixon all in his face. Made the three little signal to Coach Titmus saying, thank you very much. As they work together at the Hemel Storm and then Champion nailing the three for the Rockets. So a whistle on the floor. I'm not entirely sure what that was for. I think it might have been a clock issue. So we're back underway. Doesn't go that time for the visitors. Not the smartest pass. As uh, Dixon concedes, but taken right back by Jenkins. Yeah, a bit half heart in your mouth moments for both coaches there. Hand off to Dixon. Jenkins gets it back. Remember Jenkins on three fouls as well. As Pinnock going to work on Sheriff. Can't go. Gets his own. Oh, nearly gets his own rebound. AJ Roberts coming away with it, in fact. To the corner. Adiola defended, well, I thought, well, illegally, as it turns out, by a Lewis Champion. Second personal on him. That's going to be the fifth foul on Reading. So for the final 44 seconds, any more fouls will be free throws. And this is where Adalola is really, really tough. Is a really tough matchup for anybody because he started to make uh, make shots. Players are defending him closer. He's beating players. Players are having to help. Champion probably just a bit late there. Uh, and Adalola definitely keeping his team interested in this one. Gets the first to go. As Powell ready to check back in next time by. Splits them, Shaq Lewis with the rebound for all intents and purposes. Sends it back to Adalola, misses it all, out of bounds. It's going to go with TBC. Just glanced off somebody's, off a Reading player's foot there. On its way out. AJ Roberts sits down. Three's on the way. Can't go from Olerarin. Final 25 of the third period. Reese Pinnock on the outside using that screen. Nine to shoot from the corner. There's champion. Can't go. Great rebound. Porter couldn't get it on the second attempt. Did the hard part, you thought. To the corner. Got a go. It doesn't. Out of time and off the mark. And at the end of three, Reading lead it 83 71 over TVC. Well, it was our uh, lowest scoring quarter uh, 24 19 in that period to the Rockets. Rockets weathered an early little storm from the Cavaliers, but. Um, Managed to get some much-needed stops in that uh, third quarter uh, and played pretty well on the break. Um, but as, a, as we were saying, I think Shaq Lewis and, and Bode Adelola have, have really uh, come to play this evening and have kept the scoreboard ticking over. It's only a six-bucket game, um, and I think that the, the Cavs have probably got one more run in them. It's whether the Rockets can, can see that through and extend their lead. It's going to be a really fascinating fourth quarter, that's for sure. Yeah, and I think out of that timeout that TVC took in, in the third, I think ultimately they had the better of it, edged the better of it after that time. Going into the final ten, it's a repetitive question, but it's a question that needs to be asked. What does TVC need to do to take take the victory? Well, I think it's... it's uh, we, we saw a couple of really, like, what we would call poor turnovers from both teams. I think if TVC can eliminate those, I think if they can keep having a presence on the offensive glass... Um, I think that will really help, and I think if they get the uh, get the ball in the hands of Adalola, he is creating a lot of stuff 
uh, and I think Victor Oleron is going to be going to be a factor in this fourth quarter. So um, yeah, they haven't gone away so far, and it'd be interesting to see if they can uh, keep chipping away at this scoreline. Oh, well, we're absolutely loving the action in front of us here. We hope you are as well at home. So huge thank you for joining us here for the first game after the winter break here on NBL Live. D1 action, year 2023. That just doesn't feel right. But the Reading Rockets, the Thames Valley Cavaliers, they're in battle. Now that does feel right. Yeah, great to see some really competitive NBL Division One action. Even though these two teams slightly lower down the league than they're used to being, um, it's a very, very competitive game, and we've seen some really good basketball on show this afternoon. I mean, when you think of powerhouse programs, you do think of TVC, you think of Reading Rockets with the, the history that they've had over the last couple of seasons. Well, but it's I think it's, beyond that. Yeah, it's a credit to the league, isn't it? I think NBL Division One has become a lot more competitive. Um, there are a lot more um, really good players playing. I think uh, teams are recruiting well. I think developing talent. So yeah, it's great to see, and that's what this this the, the sport of basketball needs. Yeah. Uber competitive. This is 11 versus 12. This has playoff implications for sure, because 12 and 4 separated by two points. Wow. Looking for Porter inside. That's been taken away. We're back underway. TVC gets it to go. Rocco Dominovic for two. And it's a 10 point ball game. Yeah, and it looks like the 2 3 zone is coming back into play for the Cavaliers. Saw some success. Crackman was able to expose that area around the foul stripe. That's Jenkins. Yes, separation puts it down. I'm in three. <laughs> That is a tough shot, regardless of what defense. Um, and I think Coach Nurizade is still, still barking about that first play where the Rockets turned it over. But uh, big buckets from Jemiah Jenkins. He is some player, a true rookie, his first season. Out of college. Dominovic looks inside Shaq Lewis beautiful finish found the space he was looking for I honestly thought that pass was going to the corner that was a brilliant pass great no look pass Powell drives kicks another pass and another finish two more Troy Cracknell having himself a day certainly is very balanced play from Cracknell he's an outrageous scorer as Porter Oh, not Porter. That's gone on Jeremiah Jenkins. Yeah. That's his fourth personal. My apologies. Jumped the gun there. Uh, Cracknell, his career high, season high, 41 points came last time out in that win over Essex. I mean, what a player. And that was an, a super efficient 41. I just need to make that very clear. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. And... Um yeah, Troy Cracknell has been uh, a real stud so far for this Rockets team um, and has led them on multiple occasions. And uh, his scoring is definitely something that uh, is helping the team hopefully claw their way back to the 500. So the first off the mark is that Powell, who's champion, talking things over. Yeah, it's the second. Again, just chipping away. If they can get it to within six with five minutes to go, they'll be very pleased. Shots up. Shots down. New champion for three. I mean, the Rockets have really shot the ball well in this, in these spells that they've had. And that's very tough to contend with, that's for sure. Goes inside to Shaq Lewis. Goes down. Good make, lose champion as well. I think he did a really good job not fouling the life out of him just then. Yeah, great rearranged finish by Shaq Lewis there. Good ball movement, Pinnock thought about the three, gives it to Cracknell, Porter. Lovely finish, baseline J. Yeah, and the Rockets have found that short corner with their bigs who have shot the ball really well from the baseline. 93-78, not look away. TVC looking to make something happen and going inside, can't find Jack Lewis. Jack Powell steals it one on one. Ended one on four. And a good make, Reese Pinnock. 
Yeah, Reese Pinnock with another offensive rebound for the Rockets. And uh, they've taken a, a substantial lead. They've got this first run in this fourth quarter. Interesting to see if Coach Banks takes time out. Uh, he's going with two changes. AJ Roberts, John Manning. I mean, if you've got those players to call on, you're in a healthy position as a coach. He is going to call time. Porter can't go. Morgan Cracknell gets it in the third attempt. He's headed to the strike to add one more. Yeah, he really does it all. Finn Porter with another uncharacter uh, uncharacteristic miss at the rim. But it's that man who's kept the Rockets going with another finish. Fourth personal foul, Rocco Dominovic. That is huge as this timeout has been taken. 97-78, the lead for Reading. And again, for me, this game is nowhere near them. Yeah, and with the Rockets scoring 97, it's incredible we're actually saying that. Yeah. But the, the, both teams have scored in bunches so quickly in this game. Anything can happen. I think it'll be in this timeout is a, is a really key one. I think if the Rockets tip the 20 point mark in terms of their lead, I think they'll probably see it out. But you know, a seven zip run here and we're right back in it again. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think even with two, three minutes left, if, if the deficit's between seven and 10 uh, for, for the Caps, I still think they're in with a chance in this game. 100%, 7.04 left to go. What a game that we have. First game back after the winter break, and again, huge thank you for you being along with us at home. Of course, there's more great action on the NBL Live YouTube. We've got the Cup Final coming up on the 22nd of January up in Manchester. Cannot wait to be bringing you all the action along from that one. Yeah, that's going to be a great game. I bet you can't wait, Darren. I am the, the heavyweights. Very, very excited to see how that one goes. Always great to get under the lights at Bellevue. As it is, we've got a game to decide right now. Troy Cracknell looking to put TVC a little bit more in the danger zone. Three-point play goes. Takes Cracknell to 27. Yeah, it looks like Cracknell could have another 30, pl 30 points plus night. AJ Roberts. Hollow rare in drives. Can't finish. Did a great job turning the corner. Cracknell doesn't go for the three, drives inside, gets it into the painted area on the second attempt is Powell. And we talked about the uh, rebounding game before we started today, and that's been really evident in this fourth quarter. Rockets have uh, missed a couple. But have got rebounds, sorry. No, no, just saying the century is up 100, plays 78 as AJ Roberts makes it 81, so chipping away. Yeah, great challenge by Zach Powell, but AJ Roberts, that's what he does really, really well. Who's champion through contact through a great contest at the rim by John Manning. Breathless action here at Loden Valley, and that's going to go the way of the Rockets and a big man checking in Troy McKindo Shaq Lewis sits down Bade Alalola into the contest for Rocco Dominovic you can definitely see the talent on this uh, Thames Valley Cavaliers team especially on the offensive end if they can just work on the defensive side of the coin then I think they're going to be uh, they're going to be around the playoffs that's for sure Absolutely. I don't think their league position tells the full story of what a talented team and a good coach they've got. Has asked for two more. Porter, lovely work from the former Folkestone Saint. Triples on the way. So it's three shots coming up. Lewis Champion with his third personal foul. Yeah. I'm going to say this, I, I think that was guess the call there, because I was not too sure what happened. I'm going to say the line. Referee definitely had a better view of it than we did. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's, it's a funny one, a call like that. Because again, 
funny in the sense of you see what it's done to the arena. The whole air just sort of came out of it, which for TVC, bad alone, perfect. That's exactly what he wants out of the situation. And now he goes to the line to shoot three, makes the first. Makes the second. Got one more. Too strong on the third. Back irons it out. 104 83. The lead is still 21. Strong hustle play there by Sheriff. Finds Manning. Gives it to AJ Roberts. Long two. Doesn't go. Good rebound by McKindo. Adolola leaves his hand. I don't know if it got help on the way. And the foul from Adolola. That's just his second in the contest. Foul on Zach Powell. As Jackson checks in. For Finn Porter. And Jenkins checks in for champion. Reese Pinnock leading all uh, rebounders in the game with 11. That's definitely uh, a big difference maker for the Rockets in this game. Lovely double double 11 points, 11 rebounds. And what doesn't show up on the stat sheet so well, his work on defense has been excellent. Cracknell. Trying to spin his way to the basket. The underhand finish, that is beautiful. And how good is he at using his body to create advantage? That's a, that's a really nice play there from Troy Cracknell. Really classy basketball, it's that. And he's just as classy in a different way. Triple from Manning. Yeah, and they keep, keep scoring. The Cavaliers are not going away. Triples on the way, triples down. Green spinning. Yeah, goodness me, we're back to the, the scoring heights of this uh, second quarter, that's for sure. Let's keep it going, fellas. Keep it going. Manning. Tries to drop it down to McKindo, gets it back after the scramble. Triple. Can't go. Powell pulls down the ball. I think, I think he's trying to slow things down is Coach Maserade. Powell, eight to shoot. Jenkins. Cragnell goes inside, out of the buzzer, throws it in. Beautiful, mate. I mean, that is a really great lesson in disciplined offense. Moving the basketball, not panicking with the shot clock winding down. And that man, Troy Cragnell, again, all the way to the rack. Nice play from the Rockets, and they, 111 is up for them. 111, 86. And it, it's not even been a game where you can be like, Phew, they clearly didn't play any defense. These sides have been going at it on both ends. Yeah, they've been trying for sure. Um, and I think we've, we've, we have seen, we'll probably see it by the percentages at the end, we have seen pretty, pretty good percentage of uh, shooting. And sometimes what can happen from a, a break is players come back quite fresh. You know, the, the league season can be quite tiring, and that, especially that first part of the season when, when we had the Kick King Trophy uh, as well. But it looks like both teams are, uh, especially the Rockets, are pretty fresh from their, their break and have, have shot, shot the ball especially well. A really good, really battling performance from both sides. And Cracknell, he's taken his total over 31. But also, that was one of the most patient plays I think we've seen from the Rockets all game. Yeah, very disciplined, and that's exactly what Coach Nurizade was shouting out to his team at that point. They just needed to take the sting out of the, uh, the or the pace of the game. Sorry. The clock is in their favour. The scoreboard is in their favour. Three and a half minutes to go in this one. TVC. I think it might be more about point differential and pride and going through your reps, and that will help. And that's a foul from Jackson. It's going to send McIndo to the strike. Yes, and uh, Coach Nurizade has put a couple of his uh, bench players on. Joining Isaac Round is Pete Walker and Ash Kitchen. 
Pete Walker, senior Welsh international, as well as a, a Welsh junior international. Played at the uh, Four Nations this summer. Making his first season in the D1. That's been swatted out of there. Ashley Kitchen, who also plays EABL ball, made six appearances in D1 last season. He's uh, only two games played in EABL this season, averaging 24 points, though, so he's a bit of a gun. Yeah, he is uh, a really, really good young talent, good shooter, um, has developed his, his driving game, but he's been out for the last eight weeks with a, a nasty ankle injury, so good to see him back for the Rockets. Again, how big is it for, for the young players that the Rockets, are, you know, that they're known for bringing through the youth as Round does well to break the pressure. Finds Kitchen, gets it to go, good stuff. Ashley Kitchen, first points on the board of the game for him. I think, as we said before, Darren, it's great to see young talent on show uh, with any team in Division 1, so uh, I'm a big advocate for that. Swatted out the hand, into the hand of Sheriff, who puts down the triple. Lovely make. Jenkins just gets it away from AJ Roberts. 113 plays 92. Still got 240 left. I mean, that's an NBA score right there. Steps in. Just off the mark there, Walker. I think that was very generous with just off the mark which I think is, is an excellent professional commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of humour at the end. Gets it to go again, Sheriff, that time just inside three-point arc. <laughs> foul called on John Manning. Just his first foul in the contest. First personal. It's the third team foul for TVC. It hasn't felt like a hugely uh, foully game. No, it hasn't. And uh, yeah, I think um, it's a great yeah. hustle play there. Sheriff laying it all on the line. Swipes it from Walker. Walker, Jenkins wanted it back, he gets it, 12 to shoot it, oh, spin move, beautiful, over the top, can't go, Jackson fouled by McIndo, yeah, to, to finish uh, that thought, obviously there have been fouls, and quite a few of them, but it hasn't impacted the, the flow of the game, it's had a real good rhythm. It definitely has, and that, that's something I know that, uh, you know, coaches talk about the use of fouls, and actually using fouls, uh, as an advantage almost obviously with the, the unsportsmanlike rule changing in recent years that's uh, that's helped but i think uh, sometimes the foul is not a bad thing long two off the mark swipe forward one manning goes in and puts it down john manning a timeout taken by the reading rockets 113 96 cutting into that lead i think with 152 left, some people might be like, well, what are you calling the timeout there for? But, you know, what is the theory there? What's the thing? Well, I think the, the first thing is he's put players uh, into the game that haven't played in the game yet. So, you know, it's, it's, it's still about teaching and learning. When you've got a young team, I think it's... Uh, I, I don't have any issue with coaches uh, working with their players. You know, the game isn't just about winning the game, it's about teaching within that. So hopefully that's what, that's what he will be doing, and that's the, the reason for his timeout. Um, his team is also on a, a, a run against them, so he just wants to take care of business in this final two minutes so he doesn't have any nasty surprises. So I think it's probably a wise timeout uh, by Coach Nurazade. For me, um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of those sorts of timeouts, those, those teachable moments, those, you know, at, at this level, it might be about a teachable moment. At another level, it might be about finding perfection. You know, if it's top of the table team and they don't like something, Call yeah. that timeout. I call those Mark Clark timeouts because yes. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those last couple of years. Yeah, Mark Clark, a really, really top level coach. Definitely somebody for us to look up to. Taking over the timeline is Round. Jenkins had a, a lane for a second, closed off quickly by McKindo and Roberts. 
picked up by Ariola. Oh, beautiful find, great finish. Jenkins. What a play, and what a tip in by Jackson. Kick ball by Cracknell. Look at this again, beautiful find, beautiful make. Just, I mean, you talk about player finding their touch, that's a real soft touch right there. Yeah, that's that's a, a volleyball move almost, just tapping it over the net. Sheriff can't go from three. He's had it going a little in this fourth period of play. Cracknell really strong to retain the ball there. Walker sets himself, sinks the triple from the break. <laughs> the Rockets bench absolutely loving that. Good to see the Welsh international make amends for that earlier miss. Foul has been called on Isaac Rounds, just his second of the contest as we see the Walker triple again. Lovely make, nothing but nylon. Yep, spot on there. Another Welsh under 18 international, Rhys Crocut, checking into the contest. He was the 2022 Dynamic National Schools under 19 Championship final MVP. He, what, he was stuff. indeed. That is that is some excellent knowledge, Darren. I have to tell you. <laughs> Had an outstanding game, 14 and 10, double double against Myersko. A brilliant, brilliant youth academy in their own right. Glad to see Welsh talent on the floor as Brown has his pocket picked by the veteran AJ Roberts. And that's 100 up for Thames Valley. Final minute of the contest, 118, plays 100. Walker again, toes behind the line, triple is good. Well, Pete Walker's come into the game and uh, is certainly shown he's not shy. Absolutely not. Alolola has it taken from him, does Makindo. Jenkins, got to get over the timeline. Good pressure from Alola. 121, 100. Walker sings the triple. Out the butter. And goes the other way, John Manning scoring all the way to the end. That was... It's not always the done thing. Personally, I love playing the full 40. The fans made their money for 40 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Pete Walker, the shot clock was winding down and he buried his third three. Rockets pouring in 124 points. Remember, Darren, we said just before half-time, when might either team get to 100? Well, we've seen 26 well, yeah. points over that, and what a game it's been. It's been an absolute barn burner, as, uh, as you've turned it. Reading taking the win, 124-102. Let's talk about... Let's talk about the Vistas TVC, obviously, 102 points. That's a huge tally. That's a huge performance that they've put into that. I think, I think, uh, I think when you always um, score over 100 points, there's lots of the things you can take away. I think that obviously that the conceding 124 has been has been hard, and I think that's something that doesn't happen very often. So I think that's something they can definitely reset and uh, and, and grow from. But uh, yeah, uh, credit to Thames Valley Cavaliers, they made a hell of a game of it, and uh, um, yeah, managed to get the cut the deficit, but couldn't quite catch the Rockets, who. Uh, we really poured in the points. So, Ben, you're about to nip off and go and grab a player. So, I'll take the opportunity to take a run through some of our points leaders. Ren Rockets led the way in scoring by Cracknell. 31 points. He has had an absolute brilliant performance as Reese Pinnock has uh, 14 and Ben Dixon has 17. Now, 17 points is really good, but 
his overall performance for me was absolutely superb. Really good defensively, set very good screens, some veteran play from him. He had a great battle with Bode Adelola. The top point scorers for the Cavs, Shaq Lewis, 28 points. Really impressive stuff. As Ad and Adalola, 22 points as well. Huge impact that him and Lewis made into the contest. Once they came in, really, really impressive stuff. As Ben is trying to desperately to get Troy Cracknell over here for a quick word. Rebounds leader, Reese Pinnock. He had 11 leading all. And Jenkins, Jeremiah Jenkins, eight assists in the content. So that's the numbers. The individual numbers, the number that matters to all the Rocket fans, 124-102 is the score. And we're just getting the headset over to Troy Cracknell now. So, Troy Cracknell with us. What a performance you have had today. Talk to us about this, this outing for the Red and Rockets. Sorry, Good try night. again there, Troy. No, uh, last five out of six games, we came home with a win. And so, we start off uh, our season a little bit slower and we're trying to, pin it, trying to pick it back up and get some more wins. Yeah, 31, 8 and 6 from you individually today. I mean, what sparked that scoring performance? Uh, first half, the uh, team was firing me, easy buckets. There were uh, two or three, and they kept laying back. And it was kind of easy buckets. And then um, they started pressing me a, a little bit more. Teammates started getting open, and then we kept finding them for more buckets. You kind of had a couple of fun individual battles today. I mean, just talk to us about, you know, how that was for you. You started outside, you moved your way inside. How did that go? Uh, I'm just doing what the, what the team needs from me. Uh, they kept switching up their defenses, and I just, I just find open spots and I get to it. Great run of form for the Rockets. How does this set you up for the remainder of the season? Uh, I mean, second half of the season, we're coming for it. We're going to come back and uh, come back to the top of the standings. I know we have a tough game next week against Derby, but we'll come to it. I uh, hope teams are ready for us because we come bring it to them every day. All right, best of luck the rest All of the right. way. Appreciate Thank your time you. and Thank well you. done today. Troy Cracknell. So, appreciate the time taken by Troy Cracknell there. And, I mean, what a performance we have seen from him. 31, 8 and 6. Leading all the way in scoring. Ben, welcome back. What a game we've just seen. We have, first of all, sorry for the delay in getting Troy. He was having a picture, signing an autograph. Ah. Then he had to do this, the, the huddle. But we finally got him. Absolutely mobbed. The, the fans are all over the floor, meeting the players, greeting the players. And that is... Again, I love that about basketball in this country. The, the connection between player, team and fan is really intricate, integral to our sport. Yeah, I think everywhere you go, you get to see that. Like Hemel Storm, Worthing Thunder, especially two, two of the top teams in, in our league at this moment in time. It's really, really good. And that's what it should be about. You know, these, these type of events should be fun, exciting. And I think we've definitely seen that today. Like, obviously the coaches will be frustrated with some defensive elements but for us here obviously live and and uh, the viewers are on YouTube it's been brilliant to see such a great game with loads of points scored okay what's who do you make as your players of the game we'll start with the visitors the Thames Valley Cavaliers well I think there's there's two guys for me um, first of all I you know, big shout out to Bode Adelola. I think he did a really, really good job. Um, it's great to see after so many years, he's still performing in this league and he's still a massive contributor. Um, so I'd like to sort of point him out first of all. Shaq Lewis was a real impact coming back into this team. I think he did a great job. He had 28 points, I think it was. Bode had 22. Um, and and they, they've got a lot of scoring talent. I think that's, that's, that's what teams need to fear against this particular group. I think it's important for the, the Cavs to go away and just look at that 124. Yes, that's down to some, some good shooting and yes, you know, when teams are shooting well and getting on runs, that's important. The, the Rockets shot 57% from the three. They were 16 from 28, so they had a really, really efficient evening. Um, you know, so if, if that's half, then, then that's going to be a big difference. 
And for Reading Rockets, I mean, who's your player of the game for, for the Rockets? Well, I think obviously Troy Cracknell with, with 31 points, but I think there's two players I'd like to, to pick out, and that's Ben Dixon and Reese Pinnock, who generally for the Rockets have been, I don't want to say role players, but they scored 31 points between them this evening. I feel that was a very big difference. I thought Dixon shot the ball extremely well. I thought Reese Pinnock was much more balanced in his attack. He had 14 points, 11 rebounds, but critically, he had zero turnovers. And that's been something that he struggled with, I think, in some games. Retaining, so really, really good for, the, for, for those guys. Retaining the ball is so, so important. I spoke to Troy about it just then. I mean, how does, how does a game like this kickstart your year for TVC and for the Ren Rockets? I think it's much needed uh, for the players' confidence uh, in terms of for the Rockets. Uh, I think it's great that, that they've, they've continued their momentum uh, going into, you know, 2023. And they'll certainly want to have, uh, you know, a big push for the playoffs. I think for, for TVC, it's always tough uh, to start the year like that. But again, it's always you've got to take your best basketballs played in March. That's, that's the key thing. So you've got to take what's happened in the game, go away and work on things that haven't gone so well and just build from there. So a massive, massive thank you to you, Ben Fisher, and to everybody at home who's joined us for what has been an absolute classic here in Ludden Valley for the NBL Live starting back in 2023. The Ren Rockets have won it, 124-102 over the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you very, very soon.